against me and the devil had a tussle, but I won. There is none like God. He is God Almighty, and there is none like him. He's able to do anything but fail. Amen. If you believe that, say amen. amen. We thank God for the, the remarks and the edifying uh, encouragement from Pastor Tina on today. It's an absolute necessity that we understand that we belong to God. Amen. We belong to God. And, 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 and because we belong to God, we can make the confession that he belongs to me. I'm reminded of the song that I used to sing as a child, Sunshine Band. I don't know if anybody remembers Sunshine Band from way back in the day. But Sunshine Band, we would be at church and we would sing, uh, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him below, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes? Jesus loves me. Yes, he loves me. And because he loves me, he considers me a friend. He considers me a friend. Why does he consider me a friend? I'm nobody. I'm nothing. I'm no good on my own. But he considers me a friend because he reveals the word to me so that I may be able to live. He reveals the word to you so that you may be able to live. I hear Jesus saying to the enemy when the enemy tried to to, to, to tempt him in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights hey, he fasted and the enemy said to him to, to, why don't you turn these stones into bread and, and Jesus responded he says man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God I, I thank God for his word I thank God for who he is and for what he's about to reveal in our lives. It's it's about to get good. Are y'all ready for good? Yeah. It's been bad for a couple of years, but it's about to get good. Yeah. It's been bad for probably longer than that if you look at it from a, an individual perspective, but it's about to get good. Why? Because God is about to show that he is still God. Yeah. And there is none beside him. There's none beside him. Go with me, if you will, to Exodus. <coughs> Exodus 19. Exodus 19. Verse 1. Exodus 19. Verse number one. We're going to read just a few little verses. Exodus 19, verse one. You got your Bibles, your smart devices. We're going to just read a few verses from this passage of Scripture. In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. What month is it? This is the third month of the year. This is the third month of the year. I want you to take note of the scripture because it's in the third month that something special is going to happen. Watch this. For where they departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up to God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, bless God, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me, above all people, for all the earth is mine. Verse 6 is where we'll stop. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak to the children of Israel. While you're there, I want you to, to go to Psalms chapter 63. 
Psalms. We want to go through to the 63rd division, 61st division, 61 and 3. And there we will take our topic for today. It says, for thou hast been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. That feels real good right there, doesn't it? Amen. For thou hast been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I, I want to take just a few moments today to talk to you from this very simple topic, he is my shelter. Somebody say that out loud. He is my shelter. He is. He is my shelter. Whether I understand things or not, he is my shelter. When you think of the word shelter, we begin to understand the principle of protection. That's what we're talking about all month. We, we, we're talking about protection. So when you look at shelter, you look at it from the perspective of protection. But it's a temporary situation. Shelter is not meant for you to make a home and to, to have children and grandchildren and start to cook and bake goods and, and turn it into a business. No, shelter is a temporary situation that, that allows you to be covered from the storm. God is a shelter, and he wants you to understand that he's covering you in this temporary situation. That's such a wonderful thing. When you come to understand that what you're going through is temporary, then you start to have a new perspective on how you're able to overcome the enemy. This is a temporary situation. That's a good place to put your hands together right there and praise God. Now, I, I, I can't preach this real good if I, if I don't have your help. So I'm going to help, help, ask you to help me preach this. So, so every now and again, I'm going to ask you to say something like this situation, this situation is, temporary. is temporary. You need to understand that because sometimes we make our home in temporary situations. God never in, in, meant for us to get comfortable in temporary situations. He wants us to know who he is and that he is able to shelter us from the onslaught of the enemy. Amen. You know David. David, we've talked about for the last couple of weeks, how David was sought out by Saul. He was stalked by Saul. Saul was trying to kill David, but God became a shelter to him because he understood that this situation was temporary. Amen. Whatever we may be experiencing, it's temporary. Whatever we may be going through, it is temporary. Uh, uh, but pre-COVID-19, uh, we could not have seen what, what, how the world would respond to this disease that has impacted so many. The entire world for about six months was shut down. We haven't seen that in our lifetimes, but it was a temporary situation. Because God never intended for it to be lastful. He, he never intended for it to, to last for all eternity. He intended for it to be temporary. Amen. Now the problem that we have is we start holding on to temporary things. Amen. When the situation is no longer valid, when the situation is no longer present, we're still holding on to temporary things. But I came to tell you today that some of the stuff that you're holding on to, that today is the day of salvation, and right now is time to let go. It's right now time to let go. God allowed this disruption in all of our lives so that we would come to know he is our shelter. So that we would come to know that he can do anything but fail. When we understand the principle of what God is wanting to do in our lives, we can hold to his hand. I hear the saints of old starting to sing in my ear. They would start to sing the song. They would say, hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Build your hope on things eternal. 
hold to God's unchanging hand. As we, we get through this discussion today, last week we talked about God keeping us safe. It was a simple prayer. Lord, keep me safe. No matter what I'm facing, keep me safe. Because you know what's happening before I do. So keep me safe. But today is a different declaration. It's a different kind of prayer. We have to understand what David was going through. David, when he wrote this 61st division of Psalms, he was reflecting on how God kept him from his enemy. Amen. When we begin to look at how God has kept us over the years, we can say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know even if you didn't know the Lord, he was still with you. Even if you didn't understand that he was protecting you, he was protecting you. Even if you didn't know that he was looking out for you, he was looking out for you. God has a way of making sure that he takes care of his children. Ah, he takes care of his children. So we go from a prayer of, of help, Lord, keep me safe to a prayer of, of, of declaration of victory. A prayer becomes a praise for David because David has concluded that you kept me, Lord. No matter how many times Saul was looking for me, you kept me. No matter how many times the enemy tried to trap me, you kept me. No matter how many times or situations I've been through, you kept me. So I can declare today that he is my shelter. He is my shelter. This is a grace of God. This is the grace of God to keep you in the midst of the storm. Yes. Don't you remember the disciples and how Jesus told them to go to the other side? And, and, and then the Bible says a storm arose. Yeah, and, and, and the Bible says that they were all afraid and, 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 and then they, they went to seek out Jesus and in the middle of the storm, Jesus was in the hull of the ship. The Bible says that he was doing something strange talking about Pastor D. I'm so glad you asked. He was asleep in the middle of the storm. He had enough nerve to have some peace when all things around them was going to hell. You have to understand who Jesus is. If you let him, he will be your peace. For the Bible declares that he is the Prince of Peace. But that ain't all. Because Jesus said this. He says, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm going back to the Father. And I need to do something right now. I need to make sure that you have what I have. It's wonderful to know that Jesus wants you to have what he has. It's wonderful to know that he considers you valuable enough to share with you what he has. So Jesus says unto his disciples, and i.e. he says the same thing to you today. He says, my peace. I give to you my peace. He says, I, I leave it with you. He says, I, I, I'm going to leave what I have that kept me sleep in the middle of a storm. I'm going to give it to you. He says, I'm going to let you have my peace because I've got another work to do. While you're holding on to my peace, I have to be your shelter. Hallelujah. He says, while you are holding on to the peace that I give, I'm going to be your shelter for the things that you don't even know that's coming your way. I am going to protect you from all danger and all harm. Somebody ought to put your hands together right there. He's, he's going, I, 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 got, I, got, I got to now cover a, a, a couple of more graces that you can now proclaim for yourself, for, for David. He proclaimed that he was my shelter. Uh, but I'm going to give you three more to add on to that so that you can have a, a set. Nobody likes to have just one of anything. You know, it, you need to have a set of things. Uh -huh. So I'm going to give you some more graces so that you know. Yeah, the first one is he's my shelter. Here's the second one. He's my covering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the third one. He's my fortress. And here's the fourth one. 
He's my strong tower. Just in case you need a little bit more time to write, I'm going to run through that again. And the, the, the first one, he's my shelter. The second one is, he's my covering. The third one is, he's my fortress. And the final one is, he's my strong tower. Do you have your four graces? You have them shelter, covering, fortress, strong tower. My God, today, we're going to begin with the covering. When you think of covering, when you think of covering, you, you think of things like a hat. I bless you, Sister, Sister Gwen. I, I see you in your pink hat, girl. You got it going on right there. You got, got that covering looking all fierce. Yes, yes, we, we appreciate when, when, when there is a covering that gives you a feeling of security. Uh-huh. When, when you have a covering, you have a feeling of security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I've got to go another place here because if I only look at a cap as a covering, I'm missing the intention of God. I, I've got to understand that my covering goes further than just a, of my head. My covering goes much further than just to the, the, just the shelter me from the storm. When we look at covering, we also have to think, think about how God protects us from falling debris. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to give you the imagery so that this comes home. See, see, if, if you are if you're working in the construction industry, they tell you that you have to wear a hard hat. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah, yeah, the hard hat and steel toe boots. Uh, why? Because what you're dealing with is unforgiving material. Hallelujah. What you're dealing with is material that could hurt and harm you. So you have to have a hard hat on. That allows you to be protected from falling debris. When I think about the covering of God, it, it reminds me of Ephesians that tells me to take the helmet of salvation. When I begin to think about this covering, the helmet of salvation, it does so much more than just covers my head. For salvation was given to cover all of me. Hallelujah. Salvation was given to rescue me. Salvation was given to save me. Salvation was given to keep me safe. So when I am covered, it's the salvation of God that he has given me freely that covers me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I got excited. I, I'm only at the beginning of the message. But I want you to understand something about, about this because salvation is free. But I, I saw something specific in this verse, um, yeah, Ephesians 6 and 12, it begins with, and take the helmet of salvation. And take the helmet of salvation. Uh, Brother Matthew, the word of God says, and take the helmet of salvation. Brother Tom, uh, the Bible says, and take the helmet of salvation. Sister Pastor Tina, the Bible says, and take the, he the, the helmet of salvation. Yeah. Here is what's interesting to me, that Jesus died for our sins. Yeah. He gave his life that we may be forgiven yeah. for all of our sins. Yeah. He died and went to the grave, yeah. but he didn't stay there. The Bible says he got up in three days, yeah. and after he rose again, he was seen among men, yeah. and in being seen among men, he performed miracles. But when he was done, he says, I gotta go back to the Father uh, so that I can leave with you salvation. So he already paid for it. Somebody say Jesus paid it all. He paid it all. He paid it all. He paid it all. But you see, he's given me a responsibility. When this says and take the helmet of salvation. Jesus is saying, I paid for it, yes. and it is yours, yes. but you can't have it unless you take it. Amen, amen. 
<laughs> My God today, he says, you can't have what is even free unless you take it for yourself. My God, I'm reminded of being a boy when there was a line downtown and it was giving away government cheese. I didn't say government. I, I wasn't trying to be uh, rec uh, uh, correct in my speech. I said government. <laughs> government cheese and peanut butter in the can and powdered eggs. You ain't had no food if you're poor unless you have some government cheese. Why? Because they make the best grilled cheese sandwiches. I didn't say sandwiches. I say sandwiches. Yes, yes, because it was something in it. But you know, you couldn't even have what they was given away from free unless you came down there for yourself and took it for yours. That's right. Wait in the line. God is saying, I've got salvation for you. But it's yours if you will take it. He says, I will cover you. And I will be your covering if you will just take it. He says, I'm not going to force you because I'm a gentleman. I'm not going to make you do this because I would overtake your will. I gave you a will so you can decide. You can decide to have me or not to have me. That's all up to you. But I need you to understand that salvation is free and it's yours if you will take it. It's yours for the taking. So we go from, we go from being sheltered, the temporary situation, we move from that to covering. And now we go from covering to a fortress. See, when you understand how God progresses you through situations, you understand that I can't get stuck in this place because there is some place else I have to be. When you understand the progression of God, you'll understand that he wants to take you from faith to faith, from glory to glory. God says there's another place I want to take you if you will come and go with me. Jesus says all the day long, my hands are outstretched, waiting for you to come in. I would have gathered you like a hen does her brood, but you wouldn't let me. Why don't you let God cover you today? Why don't you let him shelter you today? And if you do those two things, he says, I got to take you someplace else. I'm going to take you someplace else. Take me, take me. You know, take me. So, somebody, that's good, Pastor Tina. Somebody say, Lord, Lord take, me take me where you want me to go. Me to there go. it is. There it is. We're going from shelter to a covering. My, my God. And we're going from a covering <laughs> to a fortress. Ah. Yes, we live in St. Louis, and it might snow again. But 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 in the winter, we understand that when it snows, depending on how much it snows, that you're able to do something specific. My, my boys do this, uh, and and my girls sometimes help them out. And and, and what what's going on is they they they're trying to build something out there, and what they're trying to build is a fortress. Yeah, a fortress serves as protection from the throes of the enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can be behind a shelter, but a shelter won't stop a dart. You can certainly be covered, but that covering is on your head. It doesn't cover your body. But when you get to a fortress, a fortress covers you from head to toe. But it's not just you that gets covered. No, no. A fortress will cover a garrison. A garrison is about 300 soldiers. I don't know about you, but I'm remembering that the old folks used to sing this song, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. In the army of the, in the, army of the Lord. I got my war clothes on, they would say, in the 
army of the Lord. So a fortress can now house and be the covering, yeah, 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 for, for a garrison of people. And the garrison of people allows for you to not just be covered, but allows you to have a community. Somebody say community. You are not by yourself. I need you now to tell somebody you're not by yourself. I know that's the trick of the enemy. Brother Robert, they, that's all the enemy wants to do is make you feel like you're by yourself. But you are not by yourself. Somebody ought to put your hands together and thank God. <laughs> not being by yourself. Mm, this community of people. My God. This community of people. God wants you to understand that it's this community of people that you can find comfort and safety. Because in the fortress, it covers, and it's no cheap fortress. No, no, no. This kind of fortress, it covers an entire city. My God, today, this kind of fortress, it covers an entire city. City. Yeah, yeah, this kind of fortress will cover you from A to B. Whatever it is that you are going through, God wants you to understand he's got you covered. And all you have to do is make your way to the fortress. Why is the fortress so important? It is so important because it's the place where you can gather yourself. It's the place where you can pull yourself together. It's the place where you can settle yourself. Yes, you might have been caught uh, unaware. Yes, you might have been caught by surprise. Yes, the situation that's come upon you seems irregular. But when you get to the fortress, uh, then is when you know uh, that you have time uh, to gather yourself. And when you gather yourself, uh, you are then able, my God, today to, to call upon the name of the Lord. Once you have pulled yourself together, then you can get to the place where you can say to yourself, this is just temporary. Somebody say that again. This is just temporary. Ah, the fortress is a place that God has designed for you to come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, in between the two world wars, uh, the story says that the French built an 87 mile long defense wall called the Manignot Line. And the Great Wall of France, it defended the border against the Germans. Uh, below the, 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 the fortress was, was a, 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 a well a well that was deep and that would contain all the water they needed. Uh, so the Germans decided, we're not gonna even try to take this fortress because the people can last underground for not just months, but for years because they have a well of water down there that will satisfy. Even if they ain't got nothing to eat, the water will satisfy. I'm reminded of a song that, that goes something like this. It says, I've got a river of life flowing out of me. It makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. It opens prison doors and it sets the captive free. I've got a river of life flowing out of me. They didn't stop there, but somebody got excited. And somebody said, uh, spring up, O oh well, within my soul. Spring up, O oh well, and make me whole. Spring up, O oh well, and give to me that life abundantly. You have to know that God has sent Jesus Christ, and he came that you might have life. And that more abundantly, it's in the fortress that you begin to gather yourself and you and fortify yourself and come to the conclusion that I don't have to take this from the enemy. I don't have to 
take this from the situation. I don't have to settle for this because this is not all that God has. Hallelujah. He has more for my life than what I'm seeing. Somebody ought to tell yourself, ah, there's more for me. If I'm in the fortress, there's more. There's more. But that would be okay if we had a fortress. We might be able to survive some things. That would be all right. If we had a fortress, we might be able to overcome some stuff. That would be wonderful if all we had was a fortress that would, would cover us from the onslaught of the enemy. But God says, I got to take you one more place. So first, I was your shelter, getting you through temporary situations. And then I was your covering because I wanted to make sure that I protected you from falling debris. And then I built you a fortress so that you may be able to collect yourself and be able to allow yourself to know that I'm still God and I'm in control. Somebody say that God is still in control. And because he's in control, what God begins to do now is turn your attention away from the fortress and to the strong tower. I don't know if I'm going to be able to contain myself because when God progresses, he moves you from faith to faith, from glory to glory. He moves you from a temporary situation to permanent housing. Oh my God. He moves you from a temporary protection to permanent, or maybe you don't know what Jesus said, but Jesus says, I've got to go to prepare a place. If I don't go, it won't get done, but I'm going to prepare a place for you, and there you shall dwell with me forever. He says, I'm not just going to give you a house. I'm not just going to give you a bungalow. I'm not just going to give you temporary dwelling. He says, I'm going to build you a mansion. My God today, he's going to build you a mansion. So he takes you from the fortress to the strong tower. Uh, why does he take you to a strong tower? I'm so glad you asked. He brings you to a strong tower because he's got provisions laid up for you. He brings you to a strong tower because he's got your needs ready to be supplied. He brings you to a strong tower because he wants you to understand that he's got you covered. There is no way that you can make it without him. I've tried and I know there's no way. I know that you've tried and you know there's no way. So I come to tell you today that there is no way you can make it without God. Everything you need is in the house of God. Everything you desire is in the house of God. Everything you want is in the house of God. All you have to do is come on in the house. Look at somebody and tell them, come on in the house. 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 Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Brother Thomas. Uh, come on in the house because that's where the feast is. God knows that you've been going through and he knows what you've had to give up and he knows what you've had to sacrifice. And so he says, I'm not just going to let you stay in the fortress and not feed you. But the Bible says that he prepares the table before you in the presence of the enemy. Why does he throw a party when the enemy is outside? Because he knows something that you don't know. He recognizes that the enemy can come in. If you're already inside, that's where God wants you to be. Because the enemy cannot come on the inside. God wants you to be realizing that when he protects you, he's got your front and your back. My 
God. The word of God says that he is your real reward. Yeah. Oh, my, my. Oh, my, my. Oh, my, my. Oh, my, my, my. Yeah, Brother Thomas, it's good to me, too. Uh, yeah, he's your real reward. What does that mean, Brother Pastor? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> you have to understand that while you are moving forward, nothing is on your back. If you read Ephesians, the sixth chapter, it tells you to put on all of this armor. It tells you to cover yourself from head to toe. It tells you so that you, you can have the sword of salvation, the feet of are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It tells you to cover your midsection. All of this is for forward motion. So if he tells you to put your armor on the back, on the front, it would stand to reason that your back is left open. But God is a good God. Yes, he is. He's your rear reward. And what he does is he protects your backside from the tricks of the enemy. When the enemy comes in like a flood, he's not coming at you from the front. He's coming at you from the back. Why? Because he don't think you're paying attention to what's behind you. But the Bible says I'm forgetting the things that are behind me. And I'm pressing forward to, yes. for I've got a river of life. Yes. 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 My God. Yes. He says I'm gonna be your real reward. Yes, that's what he says. I, I'm gonna protect you, your backside. Yes, he says. But, but but you have to understand what a real reward is. Ah, my God. My God. A real reward is more than protection for what you can't see. Yeah, yeah. There's a word there that we've got to take into consideration. It's called reward. God rewards you for moving forward. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He rewards you for when you can forget the past and move forward. God will reward you. Yes, he will. Look over at somebody and tell them you've got a reward coming. You've got a reward coming. Your reward is coming. The more you forget the past, the bigger the reward. Hallelujah. The more you can forget what happened uh, way back when, the more you can feel the presence of God leading you towards your reward. Yeah, I need you to understand what's happening right now. God is in the midst of making sure you are protected. Yes, Lord, thank you. He's your shelter. He's your covering. He's your fortress. He's your strong tower. He's your shelter. He's your covering. Oh, my God. He's your fortress. And he's your strong tower. Somebody say that with me. Say, he's your shelter. He's your covering. Uh, he's your fortress and he's your strong tower. He's your strong tower. He's your strong tower. God is able to do anything but fail. And I just came for just a little while to help you declare in your life that he's kept me all these years from hurt, harm, and danger. Both seen and unseen. Yes. I got excited. I'm sorry, y'all. When, when I hear the word of God, yeah, that's a good place to praise it. When I hear the word of God and the encouragement that it provides, I can't help but to get excited. It's all right. When you reflect on the goodness of Jesus in your life, you can't help but say, He's been my shelter. He's been my covering. He's been my fortress. And he's been my strong tower. This is a great place to understand that God has never left you alone. I know it may have felt like that. 
but he's never left you alone. I know it may have felt like, may have felt at times that you were abandoned, but he's never left you alone. Thank you, Jesus. I know at times it may have felt like you were all by yourself in the midst of the situation, but he has never left you alone. However bad it was, it could have been worse. But God in his infinite wisdom said, I'm trusting you to go through this. Yes, yes, yes. He says, I'm trusting you to endure this. I'm trusting you to make it out of this. Because I know you can. You just have to believe it. He's doing an amazing thing. This morning, I was able to to do, do Sunday school and for 13 minutes God began to unload onto those who would hear it was just a Facebook live situation but I want to bring it to you today because I believe God is still saying it it wasn't just a this morning thing it's a this afternoon thing here's what he's saying he's saying I am going to cause every need you have to be met daily. Yes, he says, every need that you have, because I want you to be able to worship me freely, I'm going to cause every need that you have to be met daily. Yes. He said, you need a job, because if a man don't work, he don't eat. And you need the funds that come in on a weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly basis. That's all good. He says, but I'm about to go beyond that. He says, I am going to bless you daily. How is he going to do that? I'm so glad you asked. Because he says, if you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall watch this men give into your bosom. And it will be yours to have, but you have to take it. You've given an offering today. Thank you for what you've given. Now it's my time to bless you. And I bless you with the word of God. By saying he will daily load you with benefits. Yes. I want you to expect it. It's still young. It's only uh, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 4, 4.30, 5 o'clock. What time is it? 4.45. So we, we still have an evening to go. Expect a blessing when you leave here today. Expect a blessing when you leave here today. For the word of God says in the 28th chapter of De Deuteronomy, he says, I know where you're going, so I'm going to bless you when you get there. Yes. I summed it up. I summed it up. But he says, I'm going to bless you in the field. I'm going to bless you in the store. I'm going to bless you on your job. I'm going to bless you in your home. Yes. Wherever you're going, God knows where you are. He's going to bless you when you get there. And I believe that. Yes. I believe it. Yes. If you believe it, come on, stand on your feet. Amen. Come on, stand on your feet. We're going to pray and dismiss. We're going to pray and dismiss.